My name is Patrick, like I said. Um, I am a student at Oregon State. I study um, sustainable horticultural production. And I also work for the OSU Ornamental Breeding Program. So we breed um, woody stem um, trees and shrubs for landscapes um, that will then get sold um, to wholesalers that will then get pushed out to garden centers. So yeah, so we do stuff like that. It's really fun. Um, and I'm super happy to be here with you guys today. And I'm glad that you guys were able to make it to our open house after the class. Um, there's a coupon on your thing, on your handout. It's 10% off your whole purchase, um, but it's only valid for today. Um, and also we've got some cookies and some other fun stuff going on in there. So feel free and stop by. My coworkers making a um, bunch of wreaths and hanging basket greens and all that stuff. So feel free and walk around and enjoy everything. And I think we'll get started. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to start kind of with a general overview of a lot of our holiday houseplants we have. Um, I've included a lot of plants in this class that aren't, that you might not necessarily consider as a holiday plant, um, but they can be great gifts or they can be um, great color in a darker time of year, uh, or they can be kind of unconventional holiday houseplants as well. Um, they're really great to have in your house and they're really easy to add kind of life into your decor for the holiday season. Uh, let me just make sure this is all, okay, we're good. Um, they also are really good as gifts, obviously, for the holiday season for parties and all that kind of stuff. Um, they come in a lot of different shapes, colors, sizes, so they're really, really um, versatile um, if for a lot of different design um, and home aesthetics and stuff like that. Um, some of them can be a little bit touchy or temperamental, um, but as long as you know a couple tips and tricks, um, they're really easy to take care of in your house and beyond even the holiday season as well. Um, which is kind of what we're going to focus on today, how to keep them looking good through the holidays and what to do after the holidays with them as well. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit um, about light. So we talked about this last class, but when I say high light or a, this plant likes to be in, you know, full sun, um, they would like to be close or in a south or west window because um, south and west have the brightest, most intense sun um, all year in Oregon. Uh, intermediate or bright indirect light could handle north facing and east facing windows or be set back in a bright area from you know a south or west window or have a grow light or something um, and then the low light plants are do good in north windows and can tolerate darker spaces for shorter periods of time which we'll talk about as well um, but they still need some source of light to do to actually grow um, and do well um, I want to mention also like I said grow lights can open up a lot more spaces in your home for plants um, if you've got a darker area um, to supplement lighting in the winter, if your plants stop growing. We sell bulbs that you can just screw into a light fixture um, that actually act as a grow light. So you don't have to buy the whole setup. You can just buy the bulb, which is really great because it also hides it. Uh, but we do sell the fixtures too. So if you want a desktop grow light or a standing, we've got some that are you know about this tall and they will stand over a taller plant. So that works it's really good for darker corners and stuff in your house that might not get as much light. Um, and so we try and carry a bunch of a couple different options in the store at all times. Um, and we also have a good selection of holiday houseplants in the store um, from November to December. And um, you can call us and check for availability or you can look on our website and that's always updated on there. Um, so the next thing I wanna talk about um, is everyone has to deal with pests. Um, I've got a picture here of some pests that you might find on a lot of houseplants and holiday houseplants as well. Um, the top left corner up there shows two spotted spider mites. It's a really, really common one for us here. They love to be inside. Um, if you see this little webbing kind of on the plant here, you see these little dots that kind of move across really slowly. Um, that's a really common symptom of spider mites and they can, they, they're suckers. So they suck all the nutrients out of the leaf and it can cause pitting and gross looking damage and stuff like that. Um, mealybugs are, can look like this little thing down here or this big fluffy ball with a bunch of them together in there. They also suck. Um, they will pile together and they're really gross. I do not like mealy bugs. Um, and so they're pretty common a lot on a lot of other um, thicker, more succulent plants. So you can see them. They also like flowers a lot. So they'll be on flowers of a lot of stuff, which kind of applies to a lot of our plants today. So it's really, that's one to look out for. Aphids, same aphids that you'd see on your roses or something else outside. They can come in green, black, gray, orange, a bunch of different colors. Depends on what they're sucking actually can make them a different color. Um, so those are common as well. Um, scale um, comes in a lot of different colors and flavors and sizes. Some can be really kind of round and tall like that one. Some can be really flat up against the plant and they can be usually tanned and yellow to somewhere in there. Brown is another color that they sometimes are. 
Um, they don't move. They just get stuck onto the stem or the leaves, and they are also a sucking insect, so they will kind of um, suck. So that brown keep... blob or the black spot? This thing right here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of different ones. That one's really, really round. <laughs> there's some that are more flat um, really? that will also uh, attach to plants like that. Um, thrips are really bad pests. They jump and they fly. Um, they're really hard to see. Um, sometimes if, if, if plants infested, infested, you can see them kind of, you know, flying around if you bump it or something. Um, they are also sucking insects. So you'll see kind of pittings and um, cellular collapse where like the back of the side of the leaf will be much darker and kind of wet looking than the rest of the leaf. Um, and then the last uh, pest that's pretty common for us um, is red spider mites. They don't produce as much webbing. They're those little tiny red dots on that leaf over there. Um, but they do the same thing as the other spider mites that we talked about. Also, I didn't put this on the slide, but fruit flies and fungus gnats are really common pests. Um, they are not my favorite. They're really annoying. They don't really hurt the plant, uh, but they can be really common in plants that are overwatered or plants that have to stay wet to do well, um, especially here in the wintertime. And so we sell a product called Mosquito Bits. I always soak that in my watering can for about 20 minutes and then I take it out and then I water my plants and that will kill any larva um, in the plant soil because they lay eggs in the soil and then they hatch out and fly around your house. And they're tiny little, they just look like little fruit flies. Um, for all the other stuff, we do have a multitude of, um, and a variety, a big selection of sprays that are organic and they're, you know, pe people safe. Um, and for bigger infestations, we have some stronger stuff too. What I would recommend, we talked about this earlier, um, a lot of our sprays are oil-based and so they can stain clothes or and furniture. So if you have a pest issue, I would recommend putting your plant in your shower or your bathtub, drenching it in the spray, letting it dry, and then putting it back where it goes and then rinsing out your tub versus spraying it where it is, or you can take it outside if the weather, if it's nice enough outside or put it in a big garbage bag and then spray it into the garbage bag. Um, that works really well. Wiping, getting a towel wet and then wiping the leaves off is also a good way to get rid of pests as well. Um, different sprays for different bugs. Um, neem oil works as a good preventative. So if you have to take a new plant home, you can always just do a preventative treatment and spray it. Um, it'll last on there and it'll kind of prevent bugs from latching on, which is great. Um, we have Captain Jacks, which will get rid of a couple different things that like to eat on the leaves, like thrips and stuff like that. Um, that's a beneficial bacteria that's in the, in the spray, so it's good to let that dry before you move it anywhere. Um, and we have a couple other options. For mealybugs, we usually use like an alcohol and oil-based solution that we have like a recipe that you can make at home, so we can get those are in the store too. Um, but if you have questions about pests, you know, come into the store, call us, we can talk you through what you've got and, you know, add, give you some solutions for that. Um, it's, it's common for everybody. It's not a big, you know, don't freak out if you have bugs. It's it's really normal. Like it happens to every gardener inside and outside. Um, they come in through the windows, they come in on your clothes. Um, they're unavoidable at some point for everybody that has house plants. So right. yeah. Um, fungus also can be an issue. Uh, fungus growth or rot. Um, if something's overwatered, it can rot the roots. Um, that can be an issue. Or if you, something's staying too wet, like on the leaves, it can get, um, you know, leaf spot or something. That you would just trim off any really gross and like really bad sections and then spray with like a copper based fungicide, which we saw here as well. Um, so that's something that can also happen here, especially in Oregon when it's wet in the wintertime. So, can all right. We, can yeah. you replant those or parts that rot off? Not usually. Usually if it's rotted, it's like the tissue has been destroyed um, and it's dead and the fungus is feeding off of that. And so it's not, if it's rotted, it's pretty done. I don't know if you can bury it, you know, two or three inches. Yeah, no. Sometimes if there's a living piece, you could, but a lot of our house plants and stuff are, once the stem is rotted, they're kind of done. Um, there are different things you can do that with in house plants, but if there's a fungus issue and you put it back in the dirt, it can sometimes make it worse. Um, so, yeah. Um, the way the rest of this class is going to be structured is I'm just going to go through categories of our holiday plants and I'll talk about the care and stuff like that. If you guys have any questions, stop me, ask me like that. That's great. Um, let me skip the slide. All right. So obviously I had to talk about poinsettias. It's going to be our first one. Very, very iconic, classic holiday plant. They come in lots of different shapes, sizes, colors. Um, there's enhanced ones that they come in. Um, that's a new thing. Um, they're not everybody's cup of tea, but you know a lot of people do like them, so we have those as well. Um, they're native to Mexico. 
And they're actually in the Euphorbia family, if you guys know what Euphorbias are. Um, Spurge is another common name for them. We get, we have hardy ones here, but they are tropical. Um, so they like to be inside all year. Um, so that's important. They are slightly toxic, which I think a lot of people know about for, um, for pests. And they have a latex um, that leaks out a white sap and it can be irritating to the skin and eyes. So if you get any on your skin, just make sure you wash it off pretty quickly. Um, some people don't have reactions to it, but you know, it can get if you have hives or a rash or something. Um, the colorful parts of the plant um, are actually not flowers. Fun fact, they are called bracts. They're a modified leaf. Um, they're meant to attract pollinators and stuff like that. But the actual flower is the center part, this, you know, these little yellow parts. These aren't open yet. I don't know if I brought one in here that's open, but they will open up and have little pollen on them. And that is the actual flower. And so a good tip for picking a good long lasting poinsettia is finding one where the buds are so closed in the middle. Um, because that means it hasn't bloomed yet and it'll still, you know, it'll last as long as possible for you in your house. Um, so that's a really important um uh, piece of information for a long lasting poinsettia. Um the brass come back with color if do they drop? So they the brax can actually hold on the plant for a while. Like it'll outgrow the brax at some point. If you want to keep it after Christmas, you can just trim the brax off and it'll branch out. They are really, really hard to get to rebloom. They need a cycle of 12 hours of darkness that's un un uninterrupted. So the way that lots of people grow them, they'll have them in a big greenhouse and they put blackout cloth over the whole greenhouse in, in Oregon um, for 12 hours and they let them out. And that is what signals it to bloom because in that part of the world where they grow, that's what will, that actually happens in the wild. Where here our days are longer or shorter, and so it can uh, it, they don't bloom, they don't think it's the time to bloom. So that's how they trigger them to blooming. So it's really hard to replicate that in your house. So that's why they are priced very you know affordable um, because they're really hard to grow. Um, and if you if you don't have the right spot, and so we want people to be able to come and just you know have them every year if they don't want to do that because right. it's a lot of work um, to get them to rebloom. Um, Lighting for poinsettias, they like bright light, um, especially long-term. They can handle lower light scenarios for shorter amount of times and during like the holidays and stuff, but they would prefer being uh, in a very well-lit, bright location. Um, <clears throat> for watering, they're native. They're actually related to a cactus family. And so they like to dry out in between waterings, but not for too long. They will wilt if they need water, you'll know. Um, they will heavily wilt and kind of do that. Uh, if you can water them right before they wilt, that's ideal. So you just want to make sure that the soil is almost dry um, before you water them again. If they come in those nice decorative sleeves, I would recommend taking them out of that, watering them in the sink, and then putting them back in because water will get trapped at the bottom of that and it'll sit in water and it could rot your poinsettia, which is not great. Um, so for long-term care, make sure that you take the plant out of that when you water it um, or put it in a nice pot. It's up to you too. Uh, but the, the, a lot of ours come with those sleeves. And so and a lot of places sell them with the sleeves like that. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, for soil repotting and maintenance kind of things, um, they like to be in a well-draining potting mixture. I would do like 50% uh, potting soil and then mix 50% perlite in there as well, just to make it a little bit more chunky, a little bit more well-draining. Um, and that'll keep the roots really healthy. Um, repotting, like most houseplants, should be done in the springtime right before they grow um, in the summer time and so that's great it doesn't um, interrupt or cause any harm to new growth um, what could happen later if you wait uh, to repot so spring is a good time if you if you're in a weird circumstance this goes for any plant if you bring a plant home and the soil's rotting or it smells bad or it's gross obviously go ahead and repot it because it's going to be it's going to be better off in new soil but I mean most of our plants says all come fresh from the farm so um, they shouldn't need to be repotted until later on um Let's see, trimming poinsettias back, like I said, can be really beneficial. You can get rid of the holiday bracts after the holiday season if you don't want them anymore, uh, or you can leave them, it's up to you. Uh, but if you trim them, just look for a node, which is a where the leaf comes out of the stem. So um, I'll just kind of show you guys. This right here uh, is going to be a node. And so if you trim right above that, I'll show the computer too, uh, right above the node right here, um, it'll encourage branching and so it'll branch out from there and new growth will come and it'll be a nice fuller plant instead of just going straight up uh, so that's important for trimming those um let's see what else sometimes they can be a little sensitive 
to drafts and um, cool weather. So make sure you take it home right after you buy it because it will drop leaves if it's left out in the cold for too long. Um, at home, make sure it's not sitting near a heat vent or a cold door or something like that um, because they will also drop leaves again. Um, they're dropping leaves, they're probably unhappy. So, um, but they also, I mean, they do have a nice adjustment period. So if you bring it home, it's not uncommon that it, you know, that you'll lose a couple leaves, a lot of, some older leaves, that's pretty normal. Um, a lot of houseplants will do that as they adjust to their new environment. Um, but if it's dropping lots of leaves, make sure there's no draft or anything nearby that could be blowing on it because that can dry it out and it can also cause them to drop leaves. So um, let's see here. I talked about picking a good one with those tight flower buds in the middle uh, rather than the ones that are open. Um, like I said, they're difficult to rebloom and some people can get lucky. I've seen them bloom in house before just growing and people, someone's like oh my point set is blooming again and I was like wow lucky <laughs> lucky you um because they can be real difficult um so even if like a even if a light is flashing them at night for like a random like five minutes it can they'll just they just won't do it like one night it's insane so they're really sensitive <laughs> for blooming um it's like I said it's not super practical and that's why we have them at affordable prices so you can just get one every year um if you don't want to keep them or you want a blooming one um Let's see here. And yeah, I think that's about it for poinsettias. Um, again, like I said, make, take, avoid big temperature swings. They're tropical plants. Um, but other than that, they should be, they're pretty easy. Um, they're great in, you know, lots of holiday displays. We'll talk about that towards the end of the class. I'm going to talk about kind of how they're used a lot and how you can use them in your house too. So, all right, I'm going to move on to um, our bowl, our holiday bulbs. Um, those are another classic plant. Um, this is a large planting amaryllis outside probably in Florida somewhere where they're doing really good um but we can grow them here inside as well um we have a couple different options the way you can purchase them so we sell just the bulbs by themselves in either you know just a bulb or um in a bag so amaryllis come in this nice big bag right here and paper whites will come as a bulb um we also sell the pot of amaryllis you can see that one right there and we have some potted paper whites as well that are already going so if you're already a little late uh, that's all right. If you want Christmas blooms, they should be planted like a week ago. If you want Christmas blooms or two weeks ago, if you want Christmas blooms. So um, you can still plant them now. They're still going to bloom for you. It just might not be on Christmas day. Um, so you just kind of have to watch out for those. And if you want one that's already going, we do sell those pre-potted ones. And those should hopefully bloom right around Christmas, New Year's, that kind of thing. Um, I want to mention that paper whites do have a scent. Um, they smell good to me. Not everybody likes it. It's kind of sweet and peppery at the same time. It's, so it can be a little overbearing. Um, so if you're sensitive to scents, just watch out for that. Amaryllis don't smell though. So the big, the bigger flower ones don't have a scent. Um, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, so on that bowl we got there? Yeah. Which way would you plant it? Oh, yeah, so if you take it out, this one right here, you would just put this part, you'd plant this part and you leave this part up. It's ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to talk about too. Just want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people will display them in glass and rocks. So you can just put the paper weight on top of the rocks like that. Fill the rocks up with water. You don't want any part of the bulb to be wet. So just the bottom has to touch the water. It'll grow roots in the rocks and it'll flower for you in rocks and glass. So that can be a really fun statement piece or a centerpiece. Um, and it's not a good long term, but it'll work great for a holiday season like display. Um, that whole setup for that paper white there is like 10 bucks. So it's not even like that expensive to do. You can make them yourself. You can do that with amaryllis as well. Um, it just makes sure again, like I said, that the water doesn't go over the top of the bulb, just the bottom needs to touch it because um, it can cause rot if it's fully in water. Um, so the tall plant right to the right of the bulb, is that? Uh, uh, this guy right here? No, there's people left. That's what, yeah. So this is an amber, this is what this is. So we have that too. Yeah. So that's what's gonna grow out of that glass. Yeah. This this one will grow out of the glass and no flowers look like this right here. Yeah. Yeah. If they're in the daffodil family as well, the paper whites are. So they're narcissists. Are they pet friendly? I don't think that they are. Um I think I wrote that down. Let me check. Not the no, that's true. <laughs> no, both are considered toxic to pets if okay. they're ingested. Um, but if you have plant, I mean, you can put them up on a shelf or, and if your cats don't bother your stuff, you should be fine. Okay. Um, but we do, we'll, we'll talk about some non-toxic options too today okay. for holiday house plants. But yeah, so that's how bulbs kind of work with those guys. Um, lots of colors in amaryllis. Paper whites are just white. 
usually. Uh, but amaryllis come in, you know, that dark red, the, the normal red, pink and white. Um, there's like a green one, there's the orange ones. Um, so there's lots of variety for those guys, which is great. Um, they they grow really fast. So it's really fun to watch for everybody, um, kids, adults, you know, it's, it's something that you can kind of check in on every day. Um, so that's really cool. Um, yeah. The paper whites, can mm -hmm. they go outside? They can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the amaryllis, I would be careful. I don't think that they're frost hardy, but the paper whites can go outside. And if, they'll bloom year after year or just once? I've never rebloomed paper whites. I know they won't rebloom every year if you just keep them in like the water stuff, but if you yeah. plant them, they probably will bloom every year because they'll get more nutrients that way. All of our potted paper whites are actually out in our greenhouse um, in the cold. So they do well. So if you want potted paper whites, they're out there. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Uh, for lighting, they can be kept in lower light for short periods of time, like the holidays, but they will get floppy. Um, and so having a support would be good or, you know, having them in a brighter section will help keep them upright, which is good. Um, <clears throat> the, the, for watering, if your paper white or amaryllis in rocks and water, just keep the water, you know, in the rocks. And that's all you have to do for the holiday season. If it's not, get it, let it get close to drying out, oh, but not let it completely dry out because they're growing so fast they use a lot of water. Um, and that's how you'd water it in the soil too. Try not to water it from the top because it can get in the crown and that can cause rot. So just water the soil or bottom water it would be best. Um, let's see here. For, like I said, they can be displayed like most outdoor bulbs um, for a fun look. You can use the glass in the rocks. Um, that's kind of temporary, good, like a holiday thing. And um, the paper whites, like you said, can be planted outside later and they'll be fine outside. So they're really cheap too. I think they're like 50 cents or 99 cents a bulb or something. Um, so they're really fun because they grow so fast. So uh, they like a lot of fertilizer during the growing season and after to help rebloom. That's a big key for reblooming amaryllis. They like a lot of fertilizer because they have got such big flowers. Um, and that's why the bulbs are so big is to hold all that energy that it's going to need to produce those flowers. So adding the fertilizer is going to help with that. Um, they have a dormancy period um, in late summer. So the amaryllis will drop all their leaves and their anything left and it'll just be a bulb. Um, at that time, it's I, it's best to be placed in a cooler, dry place, like a garage or something, um, while it's dormant because it's resting. They like to rest. They've got, they put so much energy into putting the flowers. That's good. They kind of take a break um, and just kind of like us, we just, they just go to sleep for a little bit. And so then once you are in, that usually happens like September through mid-November. And mid-November is when you would take it out of dormancy, get it in a warm, bright spot, and that'll encourage it to start growing again. So... That's how those guys, normal potting soil is just fine for them. Um, or if you're gonna plant the paper whites in the ground, just like you would a daffodil, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I got to say about bulbs. They're really fun and really easy to grow. I love doing them. They're such little effort for a lot of reward because they've got those huge, crazy flowers and they last a long time. So yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna talk about Christmas cactus or uh, zygo cactus um, and calancho. Uh, some people say Kalanchoe. Well, there's a lot of different ways to say it. I say Kalancho though, so that's how I'm going to be saying it, just so that it's, we're clear on that today. Um, they are very iconic, very old house plant. You know, that's something that people have a lot in their houses. I just inherited a gigantic one that's like probably like five feet across. It's insane. I don't really know what to do with it, but it's, it's in Christmas. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. They get big. Yeah. So oh, if you have it for a long time, it can be has an option. gigantic. Um, <laughs> But they do get big and they can be divided or cut. So, I mean, if it ever got too big, you can definitely trim it. Um, but they're super rewarding. They've got these really cool, pretty flowers. They come in lots of different colors. I don't know why I could not find good representations of the colors online, but there are red, purple, pink, orange, yellow. Um, there's lots of different options for Christmas cactus. So that's really, really fun. So um, like I said, they're a cactus. So they like to dry out, but you would think not as not as much as you think they would because they're a cactus. They're a rainforest cactus. So they like to dry out almost completely and then give it a water. Um, you don't want to wait a long time in between. Um, you can also tell if they need water by feeling the um the leaves. They'll feel really smooth and kind of tight if they're if they're well watered. And if they're dry, they'll feel kind of wrinkly and leathery, leathery. Um so that's a good way to tell if Christmas cactus would need water. Um when they're flowering though, I would be careful. 
if you miss a watering, they'll start dropping flowers pretty quickly. So it can kind of end your flower season a little early. So just make sure that you are checking on it and making sure that it's, you know, not getting too dry um, when it's flowering. Um, I talk, well, we were talking about kalanchas too, not really considered a holiday plant. They're kind of available year round, um, but they're great gifts and they can be good for holidays. They, they come in red um, and there's an orange one right there but they also come in pink and they come in single and double flowered. So that's a double flowered one. And both the pictures I have are double flowered, but some are just five petals and then, you know, the normal flower parts in the middle. Um, so there's a couple of different options for those. Those are succulents, but same kind of thing with Christmas cactus when they're flowering, you don't want them to dry out for too long because it'll cut the flowers lifespan a little short. Um, let's see here. What about lighting? Lighting is going to be bright light, uh, ideally. Christmas cactus can do bright indirect, so they don't need direct sun, but you know, a nice well-lit area. Kalancho can take full sun or bright indirect as well. Um, so those guys generally, and it helps them bloom too. If they've got a lot of light, they can kind of gain up the energy. Fertilizer again is gonna be important. Anything flowering is gonna want fertilizer to help them keep blooming. Um, Christmas cactus also are triggered to bloom usually by a temperature drop. So if you have it outside in the summertime or near a window, it, that's ideal because you can bring it in in October and let it get that temperature drop naturally outside and then bring it in and it'll encourage it to start blooming. Um, so that's an important thing for Christmas cactus to get them to rebloom as well. Um, for, let's see here. Soil for Christmas cactus and colantia should be well draining potting soil. You could do a mixture of um, like cactus mix and potting soil together or do you know potting soil with perlite and orchid bark um, to keep it well draining. Um, and that should be good for them to help keep them dry and not too wet, long, wet for too long. Uh, all right. They're not like poinsettias where they hold on to their flowers after the season. So they're great houseplants because they kind of come in and out with the season. And you don't have to really do a whole lot to them. They make, they're really easy care. They're, like I said, they're non-toxic, uh, both of them. So they're good options for pets. Um, for Christmas cactus, the flowers will fall off on their own. So you just kind of have to clean them up. For calanchos, they're kind of on little spikes. Um, so you just have to trim the spikes off when the flowers are done. Um, just kind of like deadheading pretty much like you would anything else. Um, like I said, for the temperature drop, once it's in the lower 40s for like a week or so, that should be enough to bring it back inside because you don't want it to freeze. And hopefully that will trigger blooming for your, the Christmas cactus as well. Um, cactus fertilizer and all purpose fertilizer would work just fine for fertilizing through the growing season too. So. All right, next I'm going to talk about um, the Norfolk Island Pines. They're really, really cool. Um, we've got a nice big one right there and a little baby one on the table. Um, they are tropical. They're not pines, actually. They're not, their common name is pine, but they're in the Ericaceae family, which is the um, monkey puzzle tree, if you guys know what that is, monkey puzzle. They're really spiky, pointy conifers um, and they have them they would grow them here outside but these are in the same family they're just tropical and these are very soft to the touch um so they make great christmas trees living christmas trees you can just decorate them in your house you know year after year and then take the decorations off and it'll be a house plant for the rest of the year um that picture on the right is actually mine in my apartment i just put lights on it the other day but it's the same size as that four inch one right there so i just strung you know cheap little lights on it for my little apartment Christmas tree. So I did that and that's really fun. This one's, you know, a better picture of kind of like a full Christmas tree. They do get big. So, I mean, it'll actually be a Christmas tree if you want it to be, but they grow rather slow. Um, so it's good to, it's a good place to start because it's not going to outgrow your house right away or anything. So that is an actual house plant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like to be inside year round. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. They're native to New Zealand, um, which so they can handle a little bit cooler temperatures, but they cannot handle frost. Um, so they do well inside here. Are they pet friendly? Um, let's see if I wrote that down. If not, I can check for you after class. Um, yeah, I don't think I wrote that down. I've had them in my house and I'm pretty sure my dogs have eaten them <laughs> and they've been <laughs> fine, but I will me make sure I will confirm that after we class for you. We have a cat that literally eats <laughs> anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. Well, I will, I will check after class for you i'll confirm i'll let you know but they're really great they're super soft and nice and i like i, I like petting them they're how, fun how old is that tree? probably a couple years probably five or six years old yeah so they grow pretty slow um those ones in that pot are seedlings so they're that's probably one or year and a half of growth yeah so those are really fun um let's see here they do eventually um 
They do get cones, I think, but it, they've got to be really mature. So you won't really see them probably in your house. It's not really super common. Oh. Yeah. Um, they're very, they're a bright light plant because they are trees. So, you know, they, they are, they form part of the canopy, but they can handle lower light. Like I said, like a lot of house plants can for the holidays. So, I mean, if you want to move it somewhere for the holidays and then move it back after, that would be fine. Um, watering, they like to be evenly moist, but they should never be sitting in water or soaking wet. Um, so just making sure that, you know, you're maintaining that nice, evenly moist thing. A lot of them come in peat moss, so it holds a lot of water. So you don't have to water them a whole lot, which is great. Um, repotting can be a little daunting because the stem is a little spiky. So when you have to repot it, it can be a little difficult. So make sure you wear gloves. Um, I would just use an all-purpose potting soil and then use like an all-purpose um, fertilizer throughout the growing season. That'll keep them happy, nice and green. Um, you shouldn't upsize any plant, any house plant more than two inches bigger than the diameter it's already in. So if it's in a four inch, you wouldn't want to go bigger than a six inch. Um, so and that can be applied to almost all house plants, including the Norfolks. Um, let's see here. Um, it can occasionally drop needles, but not like a Nor not like a Nordman fir or something would in your house. Um, they the branches usually just tend to dry, die off when they're older, and you could just cut them off. So it's not going to make a huge mess or anything, which is great. Um, and yeah, I mean they're really pretty plants. They're like, they've got that really nice like green color, and they're really soft. Um, and so I I I'm a big Norfolk fan. <laughs> so they're great. Uh, I'm gonna move on. We're gonna talk about. Uh, anthurians and bromeliads. These aren't necessarily really considered holiday houseplants, um, but they're great gifts. Um, they do have lots of colors that are holiday-y, um, and so they're really fun to have. They're really easy to take care of as well. Um, anthuriums uh, come in lots of different colors. There's white, pink, red, purple, and pink. Um, that's just the age of the flower. The one on the bottom is a little bit older, so they kind of change color as they age, which is great. Um, and with, I mean, they're, they've got really bright blooms that last a very long time. Like what you're talking, you know, up to, upwards of a month um, for each flower. So that's wow. great. Yeah. So it's great for holidays because it lasts such a long time. Um, and you can get that best, the festively colored blooms um, to add that color to your space. Um, both of them, because they're flowering plants, do prefer bright light. Um, but they, like I saw, like all house plants, like I've been mentioning, they can handle lower lights just for holidays and then be put back in a different spot. Um, anthuriums just need bright light and fertilizer to keep blooming and they'll bloom all year. They don't really have a cycle. They just kind of keep oh. blooming. They might take a little break, um, but they do, there's not, there's not a season for them necessarily. For myliads, the middle, that nice bract, it's another, it's also called a bract. It's a modified leaf again. Um, this kind of steady thing right here. Um, there'll be little flowers in the little crux of it. Um, but they, the bract will last upwards of a month and then it'll die and you can just trim it and you'll have a nice green plant. It'll produce pups, um, so little baby plants that will mature alongside of it. Um, and those will rebloom for you. The original plant never usually reblooms, but the pups will be the ones that give you more flowers later on. Um, so the fertilizer and light really help give you the flowers again later because it is a lot of energy to create that big structure. Uh, but those also come in orange, yellow, red, purple, pink. And then there's some like with leaves that'll be squattier. Some leaves will be really big and like silvery colored. So there's lots of variety in bromeliads and anthuriums for sure. Um, both of them for watering um, like to approach getting dry, but not fully dry out in between waterings. Um, they're rainforest plants, so they like a little fluctuation. They don't want to sit in water, but they don't want to completely dry out as well. Um, like like with all the all the other flowering plants, if you if they dry out for too long, it can hurt the flowers um, in the in the long term. Um, let's see here. When this is important too for bromeliads, when they're flowering, you do not want to get the inside with water. They collect water in the wild in here, and it'll sit in there. But when it's flowering, it can cause us to rot, and it'll make it last way shorter than it would. So just when it's flowering, make sure you only water on the soil or from the bottom. Um, because you would just lose the whole point of the thing. So that'd be really sad. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, so for soils, repotting, and maintenance, both anthuriums and bromeliads are good in all-purpose potting soil with some orchid bark or extra perlite for extra drainage and airflow because they do live in the jungle and it's kind of chunky mm -hmm. soil mix so they grow on trees. Um, so that's a good way to replicate that. Same thing, repotting in spring after they're done blooming. Don't overpot. Um, deadheading and trimming other blooms is important um, just to keep it looking nice. And we've already kind of talked about what you, how to take care of them. It's the same thing after the holiday season. 
So they're great plants. They're great gifts. So, yeah. Uh, cyclamen are really good gifts as well. Usually they have a nice fragrance, um, really perfumey kind of. Um, not always, but there's some that will have a really strong scent, um, which is great. They can be kept outside. Um, they're not super, super cold hardy. So if you have a hard frost, you might want to protect it. Um, but they can, can be um, also kept inside too. So good gift. Um, come in lots of colors, pink, purple, red, white. Um, they got that really pretty leaf that pattern as well. You can kind of see it in the picture right here. So even when they're not blooming, they're really nice. Deadheading is a thing that you're going to have to do with these as well, because once they put one up, they'll just kind of die and get replaced by the next one. Um, flowering plant again, fertilizer, white is important. Um, not full sun though. They'll burn in full sun. Um, they're a bulb actually underneath there. So you want it for watering. You want to make sure they stay evenly moist. You can let them dry out a little bit, but not sitting in water and definitely not like completely bone dry or anything like that. Um, I think I, I got to write these down. Let me, I'll circle them. I don't know if I wrote this one down. I didn't write this one down. I'll check for a cyclamen in Northbrook after the class. <laughs> I'll edit that too, because we're going to post this online. So we'll edit the, the handout for you. Um, so we'll look at that. Um, let's see here. Uh, they're considered to zone nine. We're now zone eight B, I think. They just released a new hardiness chart like two days ago. OSU and like the um, a, a federal agency came together and redid all the climate zones. We're warmer, a lot warmer now. Wow. Um, so I think we're, nice. I think we're 8B. So, and they're harder to zone nine. So it's really close, but if we get a really hard frost, you should protect them. Um, so yeah, um, they can be prone to powdery mildew actually, which uh, do you guys know what powdery mildew is? Yeah, okay. Um, so copper fungicide is good. If you see any powdery mildew, get off all the gross, really bad leaves um, and that would help um, stop the spread. Um, some leaves will get old and yellow, just pinch them off, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, they're really easy to take care of and they're great gifts as well. And I will check for both those plants after okay. class. <laughs> uh, Tillandsia are pet safe, I do know that. Um, air plants, again, not really considered a holiday house plant, but they can be put in lots of different arrangements and really cute things that are very fest festive. Um, they, like I like pictured here, they can be put on wreaths, um, they can be centerpieces, you can make them into ornaments, just get a little glass ball and put them in the ornaments. Um, this one, they hung this set, Spanish moss, on the tree and they put lights in it, ornaments, and then they put little other air plants in it as well. So there's lots of different things you can do with them, even if they're not really considered a holiday house plant. Um, this, we've got this little tree, the Christmas tree, um, with holes in it, so you can put some in there too. So lots of different stuff can be done with air plants. Um, for festive things. They're really easy to take care of. They grow, they're epiphytes, so they grow on trees actually. Um, and they get watered when it rains. So we just soak them once a week um, in a bucket, make sure the leaves are what's actually in the water. Um, they don't really normally have roots. And if they do, they're using it to attach. They don't, they don't actually absorb water. The leaves are what is absorbs water. Um, yeah, soak them once a week, let them dry upside down so that no water gets stuck inside of it and rots it. And then you can just put it back where it goes. <laughs> that's a it's a pretty common mistake with them if the water gets stuck in there they rot really easily so make sure that they're in a good well ventilated spot upside down maybe on a towel and it helps them dry out how long out. do you keep them in water 15 to 20 minutes really yeah <laughs> now if you miss one you know if you miss a week maybe do 30 minutes max but do not like i would not go past that because it can cause some rot to get in there yeah so, I, I have done that yeah and it's just like oh my god I've, we've all been there day. we've all been there it, <laughs> it's happened to me it's pretty common um so that's you know watch out for that for, for a rot that's probably they don't really get a lot of pests but that's the main issue that they'll experience with so those on the reef yeah it's on the left hand side huh? how long do you water that just soak the whole reef Really? Mm -hmm. it, so this is um, dried grapevine. Okay. So it's really hard and sturdy. It's not going to rot if it dries out pretty quickly. It, for only 20 minutes, it's not a big deal. So you just soak the whole thing and okay. put it in there. They're okay. attached with plant safe glue. If you okay. use, you can go to the craft store, like Michael's, and get E6000 glue. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's, in a, it's like in yeah. a silver bottle. That is plant safe. Really? So you, yeah, I know. So you would just take like this one, for example, this is a little cute red stand that we have for them. It's kind of fun centerpieces and stuff. But you would just take like the stem part or the bottom part right here uh -huh. and then put glue on it and then attach it that way on whatever you're gluing it to. Um, you can do it on driftwood or on the reef, like, a, like it's shown there. Um, 
We also have these little sands and stuff like that. And then you soak, like if it was on driftwood, you would just soak the whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can get hard if you put it on like a big piece of driftwood. Um, yeah. You might have to go to the bathtub or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, if it's a small enough, you just put it in a bucket or the sink or something okay. like that. So oh. yeah, they like bright filtered light because they do grow under the canopy in the rainforest. Um, if you've ever been to Florida or like more in the south, Spanish moss is actually native. It just grows all over the trees there. Um, this stuff right here, it looks like lichen, but it's actually an air plant. So same care, again, oh. soak once a week for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, those are great. They're really cool. Um, they're good filler. I use them a lot in my displays, as you can see. It's kind of just like a fill-in stuff, which is nice. Um, so what if a cat will be there? I'm thinking your cat will be there. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is plant, that is pet safe. Really? Yeah, they're not toxic. Very pets. <laughs> yeah, spreading it all over your head. Yeah. <laughs> So those are pet safe, which is great. Um, I think everything else, I mean, care is the same every year. Um, yeah, that's about it. They will bloom. Sometimes um, like they grow like bromeliads. So if they bloom, they'll produce little babies and they'll kind of form into a clump and those will bloom again. Um, and they'll kind of form into a ball eventually. I think, oh yeah, this one, maybe it's not looking. I thought I could have been sure blooming one, but I guess not. They shoot up spikes a lot like this with flowers on them. Um, so that's how they reproduce as well. How do you fertilize? What do you use? So this, I don't, mm, that's, that's a good question. They sell air plant fertilizer. You would just drip it in the, in the mixture that you soak it in and let it soak in the fertilizer water. Oh, okay. Um, I, I yeah, think I got a spray. you can get a spray too. Yeah. A spray too. yeah you can just spray them too, but just make sure it's not collecting in the center because it'll cause rot. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what I do. You can spray the water too, I guess, or you know, take the cap off and put a little in the water too. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So um, that would work as well. I think that's my last group of plants I want to go over. Uh, maybe I didn't. Did I take? I might have taken African violets out of here. Mm -hmm. But African violets and the streptocarpus right there um, is what that's called. That really pretty um, purple yellowy flower on the end of the table. Um, they're they're an African violet family. I think that they're pet safe, but I will confirm for you. Um, but same care as African violets, they like to stay evenly moist, bright light for flowering, fertilizer for flowering. Um, they make great gifts as well because the flowers are super nice and showy. They're so pretty. Yeah, so those are awesome. They they've been a hot um, ticket item this weekend. A lot of people have been really? all over them. Yeah, so that's great for those guys as well. I think I think that would be everything I've brought in here today. I, I don't know if I mentioned the poinsettias that have glitter and paint on them. They're called enhanced poinsettias. They literally spray paint and put glitter on them, but they're just normal poinsettias. So that's it, the same care, same everything, but that's what they are. So just so you guys know um, as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna talk about some different design choices and stuff you can do with all these plants here. Um, Poinsettias, obviously, you know, centerpieces, accents, make great gifts for housewarming, um, mass um, displays in like churches and, you know, public spaces are really common. They're really pretty. So if you ever have to do that, um, that's a fun as well. Um, let's see. They're big ones, like that gigantic one on the ground right there are good statement pieces. They're good to fill a corner. Um, obviously, you wouldn't probably put that on your table just because it's so big, but a good floor plant. Uh, and we do have our little, even our little itty bitty baby poinsettias as well for sale. Um, so those are cute gifts or, you know, accent pieces or whatever. Um, let's see. And like I said, lots of colors, lots of styles. My favorite one is the glitter one. Not the, not the glitter one. This is called glitter. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the natural glitter. <laughs> right. uh, it's just the white speckled flower one. So I, that's my favorite poinsettia yeah. variety. Yeah. Um, so those are great. The, the, I don't think they have price tags on them in the store, but there's a list of each pot size is a different price. So um, for bowls, like I said, um, glass containers that make great centerpieces. Um, you can see the roots, you can see the flower, you can watch it grow. Um, so those are really cool. I have I either put them on my mantle or on my table and they look great all, with, all winter. Um, this is another, this is an amaryllis in a glass jar. Um, so that's what they look like when they're in glass jars like that. Um, Christmas cactus and calancho are great gifts because they're super easy to take care of. They're pet non-toxic. They're really easy to take care of long-term um, and they rebloom rather easily compared to like a poinsettia wood or something. Um, they're usually sold retail as smaller sizes, but like I showed you guys, they can get gigantic. Um, so you can trim them back, divide them up, do whatever you need to keep it the size that you want. Or if you want a gigantic one, you know, they're 
quite they put on quite the show they get covered in flowers so they're really pretty when they're big same with Kalancho as well um norfolk's really really awesome living christmas trees i showed you my little one in my apartment um they fit in lots of different spaces um if you're looking for, you know, like fresh greenery in the house, that's going to last you a long time. Norfolk's are a great option. Um, Anthuriums and bromeliads, people have done a lot of different stuff with those. You can see this is a bromeliad tree that yeah. someone has put together. So it's probably a metal stand in there. And they've put um, the pots of the bromeliads in it on, in design. So the, you know, this is going to be, they're trying to make, this is like as a Christmas tree and these are like ornaments and stuff like that. And so that's a really, really fun, you know, idea. You can do lots of different things with them. Um, obviously not everyone's going to be able to do that in their house or whatever, but the, yeah, exactly. They're really cool for displays and stuff like that. If you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. Um, Cyclamen, I got a picture, you know, great gifts. They smell good. I just gave one, got one from my grandma actually. Um, and she really liked it. So they're really easy to take care of and they can go inside or outside usually during the holiday season. Um, yeah, I think, let's see what else here. Oh yeah, anthuriums and bromeliads also make great centerpieces. I, this, I didn't mean to just show you guys this. I'm like, don't limit yourselves to a giant bromeliad tree. <laughs> they're great gifts and they're great centerpieces because the flowers last so long and the anthuriums will just bloom constantly if they're happy. So um, that's a good one. Um, Tillandsia, like I said, they're often overlooked in holiday plants, but I mean, they make great wreaths and really cool centerpieces and they can be paired with like our cut fresh greens out there in a centerpiece or something like that. Um, as like those can be the base and the plants that will be in the center is like a centerpiece um, and they can be massed together or standalone um, in things like terrariums like that glass jar over there would be really you could put like a little decorative Christmas tree in there with some Tillandsia plants around it and some lights or something like that so lots of different ways you can use air plants um, kind of in your holiday stuff and I think that's all I have for you guys today uh, I'm here for any questions or anything like that like I said, the coupon that's attached to your handout is 10% off your entire purchase today and today only. Um, so make sure you guys use that if you're looking to buy stuff today. And yeah, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I have a lighting.